Hey everybody, and welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series, The Lycan Lounge. And we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite Lycan games of all time, The House of the Dead. We are playing it on the Sega Saturn, and I will warn you, this is an absolute garbage port. All the gameplay is there, and it's still super fun, but as far as the graphics are concerned, if you put this against the Model 2 hardware that it was based on, you're going to see that the Saturn port is absolutely abysmal. Now, I'd love to pick up a Model 2 and this game for my collection, but they're expensive, they're bulky, and they only play House of the Dead 2, so I've never pulled the trigger on that, and I probably won't. It's available on PC as well, and that's a lot better graphics, but for authenticity, I wanted to play it on the Saturn, so if I wanted to have this look better, I certainly could, but I don't think I'll ever actually pick up a Model 2. But as far as this game is concerned, this launches the entire House of the Dead series, which is one of the things that Sega is most well known for outside, I think, of Sonic. Obviously, we just got Scarlet Dawn last year, and then with Overkill, there's six different games in the series, plus some offshoots. So this is definitely one of those Sega properties that just keeps coming out with games, and it's something that Sega is just definitely known for. So as far as this game's concerned, I absolutely love it. This was the first Saturn game I think I actually got, or maybe like the second Lycan game, but I absolutely wanted a Saturn just for this game, because I played this at Great Escape in Glens Falls, New York, when I was probably like 10 or 11 years old. We went over there in the summer, and as opposed to going on rides, which I absolutely don't trust, I swear they're there to kill you, I went to the arcades, saw this game, and beat it from start to finish. Probably spent way too much money doing it, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And it still remains one of my favorite childhood gaming memories, and one of my favorite games of all time, even now when I'm 35 years old. Saturn port, like I said, you can see that the pixelation on those textures is massive. There's definitely some frame rate hitches all over the place, and there's going to be loading as well. But this game is just so fun that I really don't care. The gameplay is still there, and nothing in the port ruins the gameplay, so I would definitely say it's worth picking up. But that comes with one large piece of advice, which is don't buy the North American version unless you're a collector of absolutely rare and expensive Saturn games. This game is going to run you well over $200 for a US copy, and it kills me that I traded mine in probably for like $2 at EB Games back in the 90s, which I'd held on to it, but you can get this in a Japanese copy for maybe 10 bucks on a good day. It is absolutely in English. There's no reason to buy the US version unless you absolutely want to collect the rarest of the rare Saturn games. So as far as that's concerned alone, I say just buy the Japanese version unless you want a $200 game on your shelf because there is no functional difference. Now we're out here in the courtyard shooting those slug monsters there and a lot of the enemies in this game are going to continue on through each House of the Dead series. All those little worms that fly around, the axe throwing zombies, the chainsaw zombie, they're going to become staples of the House of the Dead series and this is where they started first. I would also say this game has an absolutely amazing soundtrack as far as any of the House of the Dead games are concerned. They definitely reuse some songs in later games, but that's just because they're so good here that they definitely should reuse them. And now we're going to go into the first boss, and it's going to get a soundtrack change. And I will say from start to finish, I could listen to the soundtrack without actually playing the game and probably enjoy myself pretty well. The voices, of course, are terrible, and you see when you look at the floor there, I think there's like 10 pixels per texture. It is huge. But now we're going to get the first boss, Chariot. And if you don't know, the entire House of the Dead series, outside of Overkill, uses tarot cards for their enemies, and they kind of theme them based on that. I don't really know much about tarot, but I think it's a fun little detail, and I like that Sega kept it across all the different platforms. And now that that boss, Chariot, has shed his armor, he's this giant green guy that you can shoot meat off the bones. So that definitely is a nice effect. Like I said, it looks a lot better on the Model 2 hardware or on the PC version versus the Saturn, but I do like the attention to detail that Sega paid when they made this game, how the enemies are destructible, how you can shoot chunks out of them. That's definitely something that I like that they focused on and something that I think other companies didn't do as well with that attention to detail and all those destructible environments. Now that we're on to stage two here, we're going to kick through the door and you're going to see that model and how bad it looks and instantaneously they give you a cheap shot with a barrel. You're barely even controlling your character and they're killing you. There are different paths and you'll see that I shot that panel out into the floor and fell a really long distance and didn't break my ankles and that's always impressive in a video game. I do love that kind of height disparity where you can just jump 20 feet, don't hurt yourself, no big deal. Got this guy back there just popping in doing nothing. But 
this game, I highly recommend it. If you haven't played it, you definitely should. You know, you can play it if you have a Saturn, you can play it on PC, you can emulate Model 2. There's plenty of different ways to play this game. So if you haven't, I'm sure you have a system that's going to be able to run it. Saturn version, like I said, is graphically going to be the worst. But if you have a Saturn and you want to have a light gun for it, and you want to play it, definitely just pick it up. Graphically, trash, but really it doesn't matter. I do like that you kind of get knocked to the ground there and all these zombies come through and you can kind of like just completely shoot parts of their head off. And like usual like gun games, save a victim, get a life up. I would say that this game is relatively hard when you first start playing it because you're only given five credits. And as you play through the game, it's going to unlock extra credits for you. I didn't make it through on my first playthrough. And unfortunately, I lost my save just because the battery in my Saturn died. So all that internal memory was wiped. And I take a continue there. You'll see that zombie had a hole all the way through his chest, and that definitely looked really cool to me. And I remember when I was a kid thinking, how can they do that? Like, how do things just destruct like that? Coming from a sprite-based gameplay to something with polygons and playing this in the arcade, I was just shocked that that was something you could do. And that's why I think I love this game so much. Not only is it a really fun game, but the memory of playing this. I can put myself back at that amusement park. I know where the machine was. If you walk through the front door, it was in the back left next to like a basketball shooting arcade game, like the physical, you throw balls into a hoop. And that's how strong the memory is. I know like the placement of it. I know what was next to it. So for all those reasons, this is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. And it launched my love for the House of the Dead series, which we'll be showing more of outside of House of the Dead 3. I don't know what they did with that one. I really don't like it. But you shoot that bookshelf and you get one of those uh, hostages back there and you can rescue them. But there's other bookshelves that you think you can shoot and find a hostage and there comes a monster. So Sega was definitely playing a little trick on you there. Just trying to get you to take another hit, throw another quarter in, everything like that. I would love at some point in time to actually try to find a House of the Dead cabinet for my collection, like a dedicated cabinet. They're still in the wild. This is a game that if you stop by any arcade, there's like a 50-50 chance that you're going to see one in the back. That's just how popular it was, and the cabinets remain out in the wild. Model 2 hardware is pretty reliable, so if you ever do want to pick one up, generally if it's not working, you can make it work. Shoot that little trigger there and that drawbridge goes up and you're able to change your path and make it a little easier on yourself as these silver guys jump right out of the tubes. I don't know the names of all the enemies, so you can't hate me. But short of that, that is House of the Dead for the Sega Saturn. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out. We'll be back on Tuesday with another episode in our mainline series. Otherwise, we hope you have a great weekend and you will see me very quickly take a hit and die. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great weekend, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.